So what if I told you that the reason why your team isn't performing its best is because it's not their fault, it's actually yours? How so? It's the way you compensate and incentivize your team. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you how average and ordinary teams turn their people into world-class revenue generating high performance teams and how you can do the same. Watch until the end because I'm about to give you my formula and how you can turn your team into a seven figure squad top of team starting in three, two, one. Let's go. Let's get this money. What's cracking, everybody? My name is Smart Guy, Matt Sapali here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And uh, once again, I've got another video here to help put more money in your pocket by incentivizing your sales team to be fired up working with you and for you. So therefore, they get the relationship they want and you get out of the relationship what you want. When you're talking about incentivizing your team, you got to incentivize behaviors for the things you want to see in your company. Oftentimes, people put together compensation structure, a salary system or commission structure where people are confused about what they're going to do. Early on in my career, some mentor told me, he said, let compensation dictate what you should be doing. So what do you think your sales team is doing? The sales team is looking at your grid, they're looking at your, their compensation plan, they're gonna look at how they fit inside the big picture of the vision of your company and say, okay, we're paid to do this, we get paid a lot to do this, we get behaviors that are leaning this way, so therefore we get this type of result. And I want you to know, I've taken a company, in my history of being in financial services, my day job is running a national insurance agency and consulting other companies to do the same in their relative industry, is making their sales force excited and fired up about working together with you and for you by creating not only a great compensation plan, but great culture that people are fired up to get together with you every day. So I've taken a ragtag team. I'm talking about ragtag team. I'm talking about people with no college degrees, people with no advanced education. I'm talking about people from different industries. I've never built a reputation in the insurance industry. A lot of my competitors do this, but I've never built a reputation in the insurance industry to poach from other insurance companies or to poach from other financial services organization. I've built my people from scratch. I don't care if you're a chiropractor, I don't care if you're a former professional athlete, I don't care if you're a veteran in the military. You come to my house and you're coachable and you're aligned and you're willing to learn and hold yourself accountable, I can make you a six-figure income, $500,000 income, seven-figure income. You can be the first person to make $100,000 in income. You can be the last person to make $500,000 income. But that's the system, that's a formula because we have a compensation plan, an incentive plan, an experience plan that gets people jacked up to stick with us for long term and taking a ragtag team into becoming a world class organization. The last eight and a half years, I've paid my guys over a hundred million dollars in commissions. Let me repeat that one more time. In the last eight years, I paid my guys over a hundred million dollars in comp, not to me, hundred million dollars in compensation to them, so they they can feed their families, they can put food on the table, they can create a lifestyle that they've dreamt of through our compensation structure in the financial services industry. So the right compensation plan not only rewards the right behavior, but is a recipe for success. Let's take a couple case studies here. So let's take a company called Zappos. Zappos, the online shoe retailer, is famous for its customer service and unique company culture. How did they achieve this? By aligning their incentives with their core values. Zappos offers financial bonuses to employees who embody their company culture, and they even pay new hires $2,000 to quit after the first week if they feel the job isn't the right fit. This counterintuitive incentive ensures that only those truly committed to the company's culture stay, resulting in passionate, dedicated workforce that delivers top-notch service. Sometimes the best incentives are those that align with your values. One of the things that uh, we did at PHB Agency, Patrick took us on a surprise trip. We ended up in Jekyll Island. We ended up by our surprise in the Federal Reserve Room. And the Federal Reserve Room was a Senator Alford back in 1911, 1910, 1911, created the tenants of the current Federal Reserve System with 12 of his special guests in that room. Well, in that same room in 2021, we go out there and we create the tenants of the morals, values, and principles of PHP Agency. And that incentivized not only the right behavior, but the right mindset and also recruited the right type of people for our company. People that didn't stand by morals, values, and principles, they naturally were repelled with the people that are jacked up about a company, a culture, a leadership team that is about morals, values, and principles, guess what? They stayed. Let's take another look at this other company, Tesla. Tesla is a company that's built on big visions and even bigger risks. One of the key incentives they use, stock options. 
Elon Musk himself famously took no salary and opted for stock options that only vest if Tesla hits certain ambitious milestones. He extended this to many of his top employees as well. This high-risk, high-reward strategy aligned the team's financial incentives with the long-term success of the company. The result? Tesla became one of the most valuable companies in the world, and those who stuck with the vision saw massive financial rewards. When you want to achieve something extraordinary, aligning incentives with long-term goals can make all the difference. Third company, our company, PHP Agency. Why? In 2022, we exited shy of a $300 million exit. Uh, Patrick Ben David is our CEO, founder of the company. And folks like myself, Rodolfo Sessi Vargas, my wife, uh, Jose Marlene Gaetan, George Palau are now the field advisory board in charge of driving the direction of the company going forward. Patrick is behind the scenes now. And our job is to make sure our company grows. And guess what? Based on our incentive program, based on our compensation plan, based on the experience that we create to improve and increase the top behaviors that grow our company. Guess what? In less than two years, we've nearly doubled the company again post acquisition. So let me share with you some of the things that we did here at PHP Agency to incentivize the guys, to incentivize their behavior. So therefore, all of our guys aren't only winning in business, but overall, collectively, our company is dominating and taking the world by storm, making us the fastest growing financial service company at this scale in all of America. Here's some of the programs that move people at PHP Agency to build their own business and get handsomely compensated for the efforts. Number one, monthly bonuses. We have five different levels of monthly bonuses. And if people reach those monthly bonuses, they get cash bonuses their way. Five level bonuses ranging from the first level all the way to the fifth, 2,500 at the first, 7,500 at the second, 25,000 dollars at the third, 70,000 at the fourth, 135,000 dollars at the fifth. Our guys and gals with inside our agency, if they hit certain metrics, certain recruiting numbers, certain paid production premium, certain licensing numbers, they get these cash incentives their way that month on top of their normal commissions and overrides from the business and agencies that they're building. Number two, world travel. And let me break that down. We have two different types of world travel. We have 90-day contests. We have what we call a builder's trip, where within inside the 90-day period that we compete with, everybody's fighting for a seat. In this case, let's say 50 or 75 we've done in the past, Families, by the way, it's the, the builder plus one. So therefore, the agency builder plus their spouse, the agency, if they're single, agency builder plus their mom or dad. This is the type of incentive plans we have inside our company. So it's a world travel. So a 90-day contest. And here's the places we've been to. We've been to Cancun, Tulum, Bahamas, Hawaii, Jamaica, Puerto Rico. These are 90-day contests to generate a lot of activity and focus in a 90-day period. So therefore, we can experience world travel together as a team, as an organization with our families. The second type of world travel is longer incentives, which is 18 month trip world travel, meaning that we get to go to these crazy destinations. Check this out. We've been to Dubai. We've been to Costa Rica. We've been to Greece and Italy. We've been to Aruba. We've been to Paris, Monaco. And about a month ago, we just came back from Bora Bora. But these are longer 18 month contests where a lot of things can happen to keep people in a long range type of focus, consistent over a longer period of time. And what's the, pay, what's the payoff? World travel. Again, where we can experience this world travel on the company's dime as a bonus, as an incentive to us to experience these trips with our families, to experience these trips with our teams, our closest associates that, we've, that we're in the trenches with on, in a, on a daily basis. This is the payoff for an 18 month type of contest. Another type of contest we have is leadership development contest, meaning that if we perform a certain amount of quota, a certain amount of business, we take our guys away and we take our guys to these type of incentive trips. Mastermind retreats. We take our guys to the Gillette Stadium because we want to break down the man in the arena. We want to break down with Tom Brady and his mindset of building a championship team over his entire career, how he even performed with even not so big names as his wide receivers and his offensive weapons. How did he do it? And in addition to that, we brought some of his teammates. We brought his manager. We brought his, uh, one of his linebackers that he uh, competed with. We brought his left tackle, Matt Light. And we interviewed these guys on stage. So our guys got to see the mindset and ask questions directly and how these guys can better perform by taking world – championship athletes. Now we can incorporate that into our insurance business. The other part of the trip is business planning. We've taken our guys here to what we call the Million Point Bay Shop Retreat, where it's a number one leadership retreat where we get together in December to plan for the year ahead, to do business planning, to put our numbers together, to identify our leaks, to be coached by people who have been there, done that, who've had a lot more experience than a lot of our guys have coming up. And they're able to take their learning curve by learning these 
skills and, and attributes and traits that incorporate into the business, their learning curve now becomes a power curve to learn from people that have been there, done that specifically in the model that we're in. And these are things that you don't have to pay for, you just gotta qualify for. Some other smaller incentives to get our guys to perform in spurts, in, in chunks. We get our guys to compete for pictures with our speakers on stage. In the past, we've had Kevin Hart. In the past, we have Magic Johnson. In the past, we have Kobe Bryant. In the past, we had George W. Bush. These are incentives we have for our guys and gals out of an entire company. Say, hey, listen, if you want to separate yourself from everybody else, you get to have a picture with the speakers. In addition to that, you also have the opportunity to earn your time to speak on stage. That's right. You can earn your time to speak on stage. You're not entitled to it. You can earn your time to speak on stage because who are we doing this for? Rewarding for the guy and gal that's going to come into the business and that wants to compete wants to dominate. It's not for the guys that want to kick back and, uh, and relax and have tenure and still feel that they're entitled to speaking roles. No, we want to award the current players of today because that's the behavior that we want to incentivize into our company. And last one, equity ownership. That's right, stock ownership. When our guys competed, we competed in years chunks. First chunk was a two-year chunk for me. When I first came in in 2015, it was a two-year chunk to compete for two years to earn stock equity ownership of the company. And after that, Patrick broke it down to three different rounds of one-year contests. Another year, another percentage of the company. Next year, another percentage of the company. So my time here in the four or five years I've been here at the company, I was able to earn a stock equity ownership of the company to drive, to get us up to work every day, to have the opportunity to compete. And today, we're the third largest shareholder of PHP Agency amongst the sales force in all of PHP Agency. Why? Because we were incentivized to grow. Even though we weren't here the, from day one, we came here in year five, year six at a company, and still we're able to compete because these metrics were put out. It said, hey, listen, if somebody wants to come up, not, not relax, but come here and compete, you can have the opportunity to run circles around people. So what type of sales force do you want to build? Do you want to build a sales force, build a, a compensation plan where people can just kick back and relax because they've been there for a while, time and service, tenure, et cetera, et cetera? Or do you always want competitors at your company? Do you want capitalism, the tenets of capitalism, to be live and well with inside your company, meaning that everybody has to improve? If you don't improve, not only with potential you might lose your job, but definitely you're not going to get any of the incentives and the bonuses. So what type of people do you want to including your company for the long term. And by the way, guess what? The way I just described it becomes very annoying for some people. Do you know why? Because this type of compensation structure, this type of incentive plan is going to force everybody to improve. You cannot be around this compensation plan. You cannot be around the incentive plan. If you want to be the same person last year, the same person two years ago, same person five years ago, no, you have to evolve. And obviously, I'm talking to you, and if you're paying attention to this uh, video, put it right down here. Because if you're paying attention right now and you're getting j uh, jacked up about this, please put in the comment section, world class, world class, world class. You know why? Because in this side, in this type of incentive plan, now are you excited? Not only are you forced to improve to yourself, not only are you jacked up, but guess what? Your people are jacked up alongside you. And guess what? You tend to attract. You tend to attract the world class, the visionaries, the people who want to put the name on the wall and be part of something special, be part of purpose, or serve a purpose greater than themselves. What a great environment to be a part of outside of just going through the motions, sales here, fill your quota, make your calls today. What a boring way to build a company. Do you want an average and ordinary company or do you want to build a world-class company? Whatever you want to build, please put in the comment section below. World-class or settle for the average and not ordinary. What do you want to do? Let me break it down one more time for you to understand so therefore you can take notes. Now, you've got financial incentives, bonuses, commissions, profit sharing, equity ownership, etc. Then you've got non-financial incentives, recognition, personal development, career growth, leadership development opportunities. Each one plays a role in driving your team towards that next level. For example, bonuses and commissions. These are your short-term drivers. They're perfect for pushing immediate results. So if you want your guys to come out with a contest from day one of month one, you want them to close out the end of the month strong, have certain bonuses and com commissions at the beginning or end of the month to drive your people's behavior. Now. I'll say this tongue in cheek because usually salespeople try to find ways to game the system. There's a little bit of gamification goes on here in understanding your sales team. So as you're incorporating and developing this into your plan, there's a little bit of testing. There's a little bit of, uh, of taking notes, feedback from your sales force in terms of what type of incentive plan, compensation plan, maybe even your executives. Maybe their behaviors aren't being driven the right way that excites them the most that drive mutually agreed upon uh, goals for both the company and them to get to the next level. So a little bit of feedback, a little testing here and there will help you put together the best compensation incentive plan 
possible. The second part is stock options and profit sharing. That's how you get your team invested in the long-term success of the company. I can tell you this. A lot of people look at a plan and say, okay, this is the way my company is going to compensate me the most for this product, the service, so I need to sell this the most. This needs to be the flagship product and a salesperson or an executive. I need to focus in on this area to create the result that my CEO, that a company is looking to have, so therefore we all can win. And the third part of this is recognition and development opportunities. These things can be just as powerful, especially for your high performers who are motivated by more than just money. You know, I ask around oftentimes, people, you know, right, they're right, absolutely right, they're not driven by money, but they're driven by recognition. Napoleon Bonaparte said something very profound. He said in his observation of being a general in the French army, he said, listen, I found what men are willing to die for, and that's the ribbons on their chest. Recognition can be a very, very powerful incentive. Again, this is another area for gamification. Because sometimes people put up some numbers, and if those numbers aren't clear or the expectation of how those numbers are processed and viewed, because somebody can fluff numbers, especially in a competitive environment like this, people can fluff numbers. They want the not only commission, or if not the commission, they want the recognition. And if they're able to fluff numbers by driving that or your systems internally don't report the numbers the right way, people just fight for the recognition, fight for the recognition, fight for the recognition. They'll get the recognition, but your company doesn't grow. So you got to make sure you inspect what you expect if people are getting the recognition necessary. Because we have many people, they fought for the recognition or they fought for the, comp the, the, the compensation plan. But 30 days later, 60 days later, 90 days later, post-deadline, post the business they didn't follow up with, the business they didn't follow through, the deals didn't get completely done. They were done by deadline, but they weren't followed through and in, in incorporated or implemented. Therefore, the company didn't grow. But yet you as a CEO, you as a sales leader, you paid the compensation or you paid the incentive, but you actually didn't get your company to grow. So these are things that you have to inspect what you expect. So if you thought that money was the only thing that people are motivated by, let's take a look at what Daniel Pink here has to say about what motivates people. Let's take a look at this. Let me give you an yeah, example everybody. of what I mean. Let me marshal the evidence here, because I'm not telling you a story. I'm making a case, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Some evidence. Dan O'Reilly, one of the great economists of our time, he and three colleagues did a study of some MIT students. They gave these MIT students a bunch of games, games that involved creativity and motor skills and concentration. And they offered them, for, for performance, three levels of rewards. Small reward, medium reward, large reward. Okay? Do really well, you get the large reward on down. What happened? As long as the task involved only mechanical skill, bonuses worked as they would be expected. The higher the pay, the better the performance. Okay? But once the task called for even rudimentary cognitive skill, a larger reward led to poorer performance. Then they said, okay, let's see if there's any cultural bias here. Let's go to Madurai, India and test this. Reward, standard of living is lower in, in Madurai. A reward that's modest by North American standards is more meaningful there. Same deal. A bunch of games, three levels of rewards. What happens? People offered the medium level of rewards, did no better than people offered the small rewards. But this time, people offered the highest rewards. They did worst of all. Wow. In eight of the nine tasks we examined across three experiments, higher incentives led to worse performance. Is this some kind of touchy-feely socialist conspiracy going on here? <laughs> no, these are economists from MIT, from Carnegie Mellon, from the University of Chicago. And do you know who sponsored this research? The Federal Reserve Bank of the United States. That's the American experience. Let's go across the pond to the London School of Economics. LSE, London School of Economics, alma mater of 11 Nobel laureates in economics. Training ground for great economic thinkers like George Soros and Friedrich Hayek and Mick Jagger. Last <laughs> month, just last month, economists at LSE looked at, at 51 studies of pay for performance plans inside of companies. Here's what the economists there said. We find that financial incentives can result in a negative impact on overall performance. There's a mismatch between what science knows and what business does. And what worries me as we stand here in the rubble of the economic collapse 
is that too many organizations are making their decisions, their, their, their policies about talent and people, based on assumptions that are outdated, unexamined, and rooted more in folklore than in science. And if we really want to get out of this economic mess, and if we really want high performance on those definitional tasks of the 21st century, the solution is not to do more of the wrong things, to entice people with a sweeter carrot or threaten them with a sharper stick. We need a whole new approach. The good news about all this is that the scientists who've been studying motivation have given us this new approach. It's an approach built much more around intrinsic motivation, around the desire to do things because they matter, because we like it, because they're interesting, because they're part of something important. And to my mind, that new operating system for our businesses revolves around three elements. Autonomy, mastery, and purpose. Autonomy, the urge to direct our own lives. Mastery, the desire to get better and better at something that matters. And purpose, the yearning to do what we do in the service of something larger than ourselves. Wow, it's, that's profound stuff, profound research there that science and uh, what companies do what they think is right is wrong. Sometimes corporate America gets it wrong because they think corporate America, they don't think human but science reveals the human behavior. So I can tell you this, from running a sales team of over 5,000 agents and being part of an organization of over 50,000 agents today, PHP Agency, I can tell you not everybody's driven by money. But I can tell you this, people want to serve a greater purpose. I'll give you an example. When we recruit people into the insurance industry, we recruit people to our company or our, our, our agency, one of the last things that uh, uh, people think of, there's a percentage of the last thing people think of is like, listen, I get the money. I know if I do the right thing, the money's going to follow. A, uh, an early boss when I was coming out the Marine Corps, uh, a, a, a boss, was, I was working for this company called Metrix, the bodybuilding uh, pro, uh, metamycin protein company. And she, in my hiring interview, and as I was becoming a salesperson for their company, she asked, Matt, what are you motivated by? Are you motivated by money or motivated by recognition? My answer, recognition. I'm motivated by recognition. Why? Because if I do the right things, if my behavior rec gets me recognition with the company, guess what will naturally follow? Money. And that's what I learned from the Marines. So if I'm tied to the higher purpose outside of just the money, the money is naturally going to follow if I follow the right behaviors. And the right behaviors is what we're incentivized to do. So if you're a CEO, you want to incentivize not just people making more money, but you want to incentivize the right behaviors. One of the biggest recruitment factors in the insurance industry, in the financial service industry, is that today there's a study out that 78% of all Americans have less than $50,000 saved off for retirement. Most people in America just don't have life insurance. When you see this battle of finances, the inflation is kicking everybody's tail. We're recruiting people to that purpose. We're recruiting people not only to be an insurance agent, not only to be an insurance agency builder, we're recruiting people the fact that they're solving a problem in America today that sadly no politician is ever going to fix. Or if they try to put policy to eventually fix it, it's going to be years from now. Meanwhile, today, we still got to pay our bills. Meanwhile, today, we got to still put a roof over our heads. Meanwhile, today, I can put food on the table and put my kids to the best opportunities in school system and health care that I, as a father and a family, can provide. That's how we're recruiting people, to a purpose. And so when you're looking at what Daniel Ping just mentioned, beautiful, what we built here at PHP is the last eight going on nine years, is that's what Patrick has allowed us the freedom to do, that we're not forced to a nine to five, but we're given the autonomy to work as much as we want to work, to work as least as we want to work, but at the same time too, as well, if you say you want to do this, then your activity level or your production should reflect that this is a commitment that you're willing to come through with based on these numbers. If this is what you want to do, but your numbers are here, then you don't really want to do this. Your behaviors is a great mirror for you and for everybody with inside your company. Because if the behaviors were right, then guess what? Or behaviors were incentivized, guess what? Then it should be hitting these type of numbers. There's a big reason why I believe that we've doubled in size long after we partnered up with Integrity Market Group after July of 2022. When the field advisory board of our company, we were incentivized to drive our respective companies with inside a company. And guess what, collectively, guess what we did? We nearly doubled in size in less than two years. How does that happen? And by the way, we're not talking about 1,000 to 2,000, 2,000, 4,000. We're talking about tens of thousands growing. We're talking about EBITDA growing in the multi, multi deca millions. We're not talking about a small company going from $100,000 income to $500,000, $500,000 to $1 million income. No, that's not us. And so when we're thinking about some case studies of effective sales incentive or incentive programs, period. Let's take a look at a couple examples here. Let's take a look at Google. Their 20% time is legendary. They gave their employees one day a week to work on whatever they're passionate about, no strings attached. That kind of trust and autonomy led to some of Google's biggest products, 
Gmail, AdSense, and even Google News. When you give your team the freedom to innovate, they'll surprise you every time. Patrick has always given us the autonomy to be free to do what we want. Why? Because he believes in free enterprise. That's the mission of our company, to save America through the free enterprise system. Free to buy, free to sell, free to win. And here's the last one people don't like. Free to fail. It's a fail part that a lot of people don't like. It's getting the rejected part that people don't like. It's being set back that people don't like. It's having a public embarrassment that people don't like. But guess what? Those are the things that forces everybody to improve, to not get bitter, but to get better. And not only does your incentive program want to encourage people, but also your team culture, your company culture. I've taken many losses with inside the company. Matter of fact, my first year in the company, I took a humiliating loss. I was competing with a good friend of mine here in the, in the company, Jose Marlene Gaetan. I lost a contest. And I'm, I was trying to kind of walk away from it, from paying up. Because <laughs> it was an embarrassing pay up. What's the pay up? I had to kiss his ring. <laughs> so not only did I pay up in our Puerto Vallarta Million Point Bay Shop retreat in December 2015, but I made sure I paid up in the most encouraging way possible. I got down on my knees, grabbed his wrist, put his ring in my mouth, and I French kissed the crap out of his ring. You know why? Because I wanted him to squirm away and, and not enjoy the moment because I know he would, but I want to destroy the moment and also want to destroy the moment for me because I don't remind myself that is the last time I ever lose a contest. That is the last time I ever get down my knees to cuss another man's ring. By the way, I had to come through with it because I agreed to it. I gave my word. I lost. I had to pay up. Embarrassing. Painful. Yeah, I'm smiling now, but I was pissed. But when I stood up, you know what stood up? What stood up was an awakened giant. And ever since then, I've taken on company records, company records, company records. And the reputation we have here at PHB Agency that my wife and I are known as the first two. The first to make 400,000 income, the first to 500,000, first to 750, the first to a million dollar income, first to two million dollar income, the first to a million point base, blah, 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 blah. Because of that moment, that incentive program, that company culture, it wasn't money that drove me, it was a public embarrassment that drove me. So think about that as you build your incentive plan. Let's take another look at another case study here. Salesforce and the V2 mom method. Visions, values, methods, obstacles, and measures. This framework aligns every employee's efforts with company's vision, making sure everyone's incentives are pulling in the same direction. It's how you turn a good team into a great one. Now, what both of these examples are share with you is that when you get your incentive structure right, the results are off the charts. And when results are off the charts, it takes on a life of its own. You create leadership within inside the ranks. You create incentives within the ranks. You create self-policing amongst the ranks that people holding each other to higher, star higher standards amongst the ranks. You create an environment where your team is motivated, aligned, and focused on one thing, that collectively we gotta do our job, because we all collectively do our job, the company does their job, and guess what the company's gonna do in return when we get to the next level, as agreed upon, as we started this incentive program, is we get handsomely rewarded, whether financially, reputation-wise, recognition-wise, experience-wise, somehow some stock option-wise, somehow some way there's a what's in it for all of us, if all of us individually, every department, every person that hold each other accountable gets incentivized, boom, here it is. I like it when the sales force gets along with the cor corporate home office executive team, they're all on the same page, and that has to do with the incentive program. That's what we did here at PHP Agency. When Patrick rolled it out, not only did the sales force have an incentive program, but the home office employees and executive staff had an incentive program that if collectively, we hit, if we hit certain goals, then there's gonna be some form of cash bonus being paid out, and that's what gets everybody jacked up, that we're on the same side of the table and working towards the same goal together, and we're all willing to go that extra mile. We're all willing to look out for one another, regardless if we haven't really interacted with by outside of three, four, five phone calls over a period of months, but what we are unified on is the same goal, doing our job in our department, working together. So here's some points here on how to design your comp structure to incentivize your team to go from ordinary to extraordinary. Step one, identify key behaviors and goals. First things first, you need to identify the key behaviors you want to see and the goals you want your team to hit. If you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there, but it might not be the road to success. Number two, match incentives to behavior. Once you know what you want, design your incentives to directly reward those behaviors. If you want your team to focus on customer satisfaction, they just don't reward sales, reward positive customer feedback too. You get what you pay for, so make sure you're paying for the right things. Number three, balance 
short-term and long-term incentives. Next, balance short-term wins with long-term success. Sure, hitting monthly targets is important, but if you also want your team invested in the big picture, that's for profit sharing or team trips or stock options or equity ownership, that's where they come in. They keep your team locked in for long-term company goals. Number four, communicate clearly. Your team needs to understand how the comp structure works, why it's set up this way, and how they can maximize their earnings while pushing the company forward. When everyone's on the same page, you create a culture of transparency and trust, and I would also add competition. The last thing I would add to this is accountability. Drive, drive, drive accountability through a leader's bulletin. There's got to be a leader's bulletin for everything. Every department has got to know their numbers, what metrics, what KPIs, what OKRs are going to drive the company, what is everybody focused on. That's like your dashboard when you get in the car. What is that department's objectives and key results? What are the key performance indicators for that particular department? On the sales side of things, the marketing side of things, what closes, what appointments, what follow-ups, what's going to incentivize it, what activities are going to lead to the results. For example, in our company, we tell our guys, there's four behaviors, there's four activities you get paid to do. Everything is just a distraction because these four behaviors, these four activities lead to these four results. These four results, then you get a handsome reward if you create these four results. But these four results don't happen unless these four activities and behaviors actually get incorporated throughout the week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, however you want to work your week. Remember, autonomy, However you incorporate these behaviors and activities, guess these four results. And that's driven all the time, not necessarily by you texting everybody or you calling everybody, but there's got to be a unifying leader's bulletin that everybody sees because what holds people accountable is where their name is on that list. And guess what? Back to recognition. A lot of people want to see their name on the list at the bottom or in the middle or in second place. People want to shoot for first place. We tell everybody here at our company, 85% of success is just showing up. Just get here, show up, because a lot. Sadly, a lot of people won't. And by the way, our sales force there's part timers and full timers. A lot of people just don't show up. Sad, but that's autonomy. That's capitalism. That's free enterprise. The thing about capitalism: if you don't improve, you don't get paid. If you don't improve, you don't get the job. So everybody here has to improve. And what's going to re- reveal that and show that? Leaders bolting. And so eighty five percent is just showing up. Fifty percent. The other fifty percent is just hard work. Well, guess what? The last five percent. That's a dog fight that brings out the best of the best of the best. I'm just jacked up talking about it because I'm ex- excited for my opportunity to change my life, that I've given the freedom to do that, that I'm given the autonomy to do that, that I have to master certain skills and behaviors, so therefore I get the results that I want. And get, guess what? When I get these skills and behaviors and I get all my bills paid for, I get all my distractions taken care of from from a financial standpoint, guess what I can focus in on? Guess what your team can focus on? Guess what everybody else can focus on? The higher purpose of not only why they're in business, why they're in business with you, but why this company is in business. The purpose behind it that should jack you up. You know, I get jacked up every time I, 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 I see this number. I get jacked up for how much money I pay other people, not me. When I see this number that I paid our guys over $100 million over the last eight and a half years, I'm fired up about that. And sadly, it's not always perfect. Some guys stick with me for the long term. Sometimes people quit. Because I incentivize the right behavior. And sometimes people that can't keep up with constantly improving, guess what happens to them long term? They end up doing something else, which is okay. And I wish them well. I wish them the best. But if you want to constantly be in a position where you're competing and improving and evolving and growing, then our firm, our agency, our company, our culture, our championship system is going to get people to experience going from ordinary income family to extraordinary life experiences because they're willing to discover the next best version of themselves. And in the process, your company also discovers the next best version of itself too as well. Incentives and compensation structures aren't just about money. They're about creating a winning culture, driving the right behaviors, and building a team that's committed to the mission. Whether you're leading a small business or a massive organization, get your comp structure right and watch your team go from good to unstoppable. That being said, if you got value from this video, please put your comments below. What's your biggest takeaway from this video? Uh, uh, Would you agree with? You didn't agree with? Please let me know. What's working well for your company? You care to share? Please put it in the comment section below too as well. What didn't work in your your company? What couldn't work in your uh, previous company or current company? We want to know. Let's have you all win here as subscribers and followers of the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel. That being said, don't forget to subscribe, hit like, and share this with people that you know are looking to improve the compensation structure for their team. That being said, God bless you guys. Until we meet again, continue to live smart. 
Cantila Smart, and be money smart today. Go, 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 go.